Hi, this is Deboki, and today I'm going to be reviewing The Making of Asian America by Erica Lee. Erica Lee is a history professor at the University of Minnesota, and this book covers the history of Asian immigration and settlement in the Americas, uh, mostly centered around the U.S. So Lee starts the book before the U.S. was even a country, uh, documenting the history of Asian laborers who came uh, via different European empires, but then she quickly transitions to talking more specifically about the U.S. to describe the experiences of Asian immigration, uh, of Asian immigrants who um, as they come over, as well as the tensions they experienced once they were here. So I'll admit when I first heard about this book, I was excited, but also a little bit skeptical. Asian America is like, well, Asian in general is a very, very broad term. There's, it's a huge continent. There's a lot of different culture cultures going on there, a lot of different experiences. So it's hard to distill the Asian American experience to like a singular one or even a spectrum of experiences just because there's so many differences that exist. And some of those differences are obvious. Some things, you know, like the way that we look, our skin color, or the religions that make up these countries, those are very obvious differences. But there are other things that are a lot more nuanced it might not be as obvious if you're not as familiar with the history. Yeah, I was a little bit nervous when I started the book. I wasn't sure how she was going to balance kind of the enormity of the Asian experience with the specific experiences that actually set people apart even within Asia. I actually ended up being totally amazed though by how well she was able to do this. Um, she really gives a great idea of how the different countries that make up Asia also gave rise to different experiences and different motivations for people to come over to the U.S. as well as why their experiences when they came here might have been so different. I mean things like the Indian immigrant experience versus the Korean versus the Chinese versus the Japanese, all of these experiences are very different and I thought she did a really good job of giving the context for why that would be. You're almost getting like a 10 for 1 special or something on history because this book doesn't just cover the U.S. history but it covers a lot of the history of the different Asian countries. For example, I actually I didn't know that much about Japanese colonization of Korea and I so I really had no clue for how, why or how those experiences would have been different when people came to the US and this book gave a really really great explanation of like the different factors that um, drove people here from those countries as well as why they were allowed different opportunities. And there's really a lot of history that we don't learn in schools about Asian America or really Asia in general like when it comes to world history you might kind of learn about a few like countries very loosely. You might learn some empires names. We don't go very in depth, especially in more recent times. Um, and definitely with U.S. history, I feel like the extent to which I learned about Asian experiences in the U.S. was like, I guess there were some Chinese workers on railroads and Japanese internment camp camps existed, but we don't really go in depth on either of those. And so we're really shortchanged on learning about our history in these countries, and especially for those of us whose parents came more recently, I think it starts to make you believe that the Asian experience in the U.S. is very, very recent, that it's really only a few decades old. And this book really does a lot to correct that. She's covering the history of immigration to the U.S. from basically the founding and even before. And what can happen when you don't have that sense of history is that you can really start to take for granted what you have and don't have. Lee documents a number of important civil rights cases for immigrants that really made it clear to me how much of what I have has been fought for by people, like, not just in the past few decades, but really over centuries. And not all of those battles were won. Some of them were lost, and they're all incredibly important for understanding the history of our country. And I think that's really important because it gives your own identity, at least for me, it gave my identity a sense of belonging in the grander context of Asian or of the U.S. history that I don't usually that I didn't really get from reading U.S. history books when I was in high school. I actually found myself getting really emotional reading the first-hand accounts of immigrants and their children as they describe the ways that they were rejected by basically the society around them. Um, even though some of them like they really had no attach attachment to like whatever their perceived home country was, like whatever non. American country they were thought to be from, um, even if they didn't have an attachment to them, like because they were kind of treated as this other, they were very much rejected in very horrible ways. There was a suicide note from an Indian man who basically had to give up everything that he had built in the U.S. and 
just reading that for me was incredibly tough. The other like, aspect of this that's kind of amazing is that it's not just stuck in history. There's a lot about this book that resonates with what we experience today. Lee gets into the model minority myth and how that both plays for and against Asian Americans. There's so many conversations about race and immigration playing out right now and the model minority myth is an especially dangerous part. I think a lot of us who do benefit from it a lot of the times, we don't want to see how limiting and tenuous it is and we don't want to recognize that it's really a way to pit us against other immigrant groups who maybe don't fit a certain mold. The book also really helped make more concrete how toxic the xenophobia and racism underlying things like the current election really are. A lot of the times because I'm mostly I'm treated pretty well, I work in an environment that I don't have to worry too much about being Indian or any kind of coming from an immigrant community, it's easy for me to kind of be like, well, that's at a distance, right? That's not, there are times where I confront that and there are microaggressions that I put up with kind of on a day-to-day -day basis, but like mostly I'm fine. But then when you put into, when you put the kind of the dialogue that's going on right now in the election and the context of how Asian Americans have been treated and are still being treated, I think it just, it, it really underlined how dangerous it is, to, like, and how concrete the policies were like these were real things that were enacted against people to like eliminate th their livelihood to to really make it hard for them to survive in the US. I think reading this book really helped me to understand kind of how easy it is to draw people into these terrible racist and xenophobic ideas. And of course these ideas can be applied to a lot of other types of immigrant groups and I think by reading this book it really helped me to understand how ideas that were used against Asian immigrants have now been shifted over to maybe other groups of immigrants. So yeah, I, I don't know if you can tell, but I am a huge fan of this book. I thought it was incredibly well written. I think she, the way that she is able to cover so much different history and really without overwhelming you, like I really felt like I had a grasp on what was going on the whole time and I really was able to keep track of where she was going um, with the different examples that she brought in. I just thought this book was really good. I feel like everyone who I talk to in real life is probably tired of me talking about it to them. They probably want me to shut up, which is why I'm making this video. So hopefully now I will just be able to, I don't know, make them watch this. Except I probably won't. Like this is a book that I wish I had read when I was younger. I mean, it came out like a year or two ago, so I couldn't have, but if I had had this one when I was younger, I feel like I would have understood so much more about my own experiences and so much more about a history that I didn't even knew existed. I like It's hard to feel a connection to Ind Indian history when I didn't grow up in India, but it's hard to feel a connection to American history when what I've learned is like doesn't involve people who look like me who have a similar sort of origin. Reading this book was really the first time where I really felt like I had a place in US history and or something to like hold on to. So yeah, I, I just think this is a great book. Even if you're not Asian American, I think it's something that is really, it's really informative and I think it's just so much about the history of the US that I, I wish, I wish we'd learned more of it in high school. So yeah, um, if you've read the book, let me know. If you've read similar books, I'm really looking for more Asian American history books now. So I would love to hear it. Bye. Also, sorry, I didn't realize that my cat was going to start cleaning himself in the back of this video, um, so sorry.